Something quick and something dirty. Today, I was kindly given a, a, a Commodore, a Commodore VIC-20 by Rob Taylor, and it used this rather interesting looking adapter, which is apparently an AC nine volts. So I've only got this bit, and although it does seem a little bit kind of fractured that end, I think I can push that on back into the molding. And that gives us, of course, the ends, these two ends. And uh, I did look up the spec. It does appear to be a 9 volt AC output, which is a bit rarer. Um, however, I have this, and it's an AC adapter. 9 volts output, 9 volt AC, 2 amps. So that should be beefy enough. I bought that for £10 off the interwebs. You can see it's a lot thinner wire than that. So I've got two choices. Either I can put a socket on this, and I do have some inline sockets somewhere an adapter an adapter but this being an AC I'm not really keen on having that around the house because chances are if you plug that into something AC is really unforgiving on electronics that expect DC by the way because of capacitance so AC will go through a capacitor and zap everything whereas DC in a capacitor, a capacitor will charge and then kind of refuse to take more and then the capacitor will discharge when you take the power off so that's kind of how a capacitor works but AC ignores capacitors and will just jump in and go wah, 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 wah. you're mine now boy and uh, mess up your day so I'm selecting a bunch of heat shrink and I can't be bothered to go find me longer heat shrinks I'm just going to use these short heat shrinks but that should do the trick so if you've got longish heat shrink put the big heat shrink on first and then you've got your little heat shrinks and fr frankly I could cut these down but I'm just going to put them on as is I can it I can it be bothered now because it's AC it does mean of course that you don't have to worry about the polarity so don't worry about the polarity get your soldering iron on and what I'm gonna do is just I'm gonna twist these up I'm gonna show you what I'm doing I'm not not very good today at showing you what I'm doing but I'm in a, in a bit of a rush I've got stuff on and uh, this is just a quick job really a quick quick job -y. a wee quick job -y for me so I'm gonna get it out of the way I've got me soldering iron on get down stay down well I've got some floaty ends here you'll just have to bear with me if they're out of focus but we won't be long with them and I'm just going to tin those up soldering iron is still getting up to temperature it's currently at 250 260 280 two that's done it's pretty much done so we'll tin that and we're going to tin that right there leaded solder always good mm -mm -mm. leaded solder you're so fan you're so fan I don't know you're so fine, I wish you were mine. You kind of are mine. I own you. Ten years this roll's been lasting me. Ten years! I almost bought another roll of it. I saw some on, uh, not only on eBay, but it was actually cheaper on Farnell. Exactly the same fault solder. And I wish I had the make and model number to hand so I could give you it, because I would recommend it wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly is the best, the best solder I have ever 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 used so i'm just pushing the heat shrink over and i'm pushing it look really quite i've got a lot of it there so you might as well get it over now there's only so much you can push heat shrink before it'll snag on something so once you get it over the bump do a pulling action pull it over pull that sheath over whence it needs to be now be a bit careful of course because you've got this bit here but that's fine that's well out of the way normally I'd use a hot air blower again I've been really just using lighters these days just because they're kind of easy and a lot of people say they don't have the hot air blower so it's up to you really just don't hold it in one place too long you're going to start a fire because of course the hot air blower doesn't use flames it just uses hot air so I've got this now over the end of the wire and covering the actual join this is going to be a bit more challenging with a lighter and you've got more chance of burning yourself <laughs> with the hot end of the lighter but keep it moving dance dancing keep that flame a dancing and uh, you'll achieve the results you need now probably go for a tighter modulus of shrinking heat shrink than I have here but it's not bad it's not really that bad but you can see at the end it's not really biting either. If it was glue lined heat shrink, it would be a lot better job, but that's fine for my application. What I might just do really is just get some masking tape 
not masking tape. What am I talking about? I'm a madman. No, insulating tape. I'll just like this. And I'm just going to wrap a, wrap a decent length on it because it's going to be nice and strong at that point then. And it's not it's not a great job actually, I have to admit, doing this. I should have should have got better heat shrink. But I've got the heat shrink I've got in my box. That's what I've got today. Some days I've got better heat shrink than others. Today, this is all I've got. So I'm doing a diagonal wrap, by the way. This is a, a kind of a diagonal wrap. So take care when you're doing a diagonal wrap because you will cock it up. Like I would cock it up. It's not the neatest, but it does get the most distance along. And there we're over the bit where we needed that strain relief the most and we are in business now you should cut that rather than snap it like me for the neatest appearance but I'm just gonna snap it and wrap it snap and wrap and there we are reasonably fine good enough to test for sure so I'm gonna plug that into my VIC-20 I know it's gonna work and that's that. Hope that's been of some use to you. And thanks for watching, you lovely people. Bye-bye. And now, the moment of truth. Light goes on. Screen on. Hello. Um, yeah, great. Jobs are good. Boo.